Hey everybody, um, I, uh, I just finished, um, painting some dinos, um, I'm running, uh, Tomb of Annihilation for some people, so, um, <clears throat> I've been painting up a ton of stuff for that. Uh, these are Parasaur Lophus, I think, is what they're called. Um, this is, this one is from, like, a tube of dinosaurs, from, like, the checkout at the Walmart, um, uh, at the Walmart, you know? Um, <clears throat> like, uh, where you're trying to go through the checkout and then your kid grabs them and it's like, mommy, mommy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this came with like a bunch of other random dinosaurs. This is an actual kit. This is, this kit is from 1994. Um, the, I got it off eBay on the cheap. Um, and, uh, these guys are like duckbill platypus dinosaurs. Like that's kind of how I remember it. Like they're herbivores. Um, so I wanted to kind of give them some counter shading. I've done a video where I talked about counter shading on um, like lizards and animals before where it's like their, their bellies are kind of lighter than their backs because it helps them to sort of blend in to, the, to their environment. But uh, yeah, let's um, let's talk about the paint job. So first off, uh, I'm just gonna prime everything black. Um, I've just got a, a ton of stuff that I'm painting, so I just every once in a while I'll have a priming party, and I'll paint everything black to start with, and then I'll do uh, different um, steps from there to paint guys. Um, I like to prime stuff with my airbrush because I have a lot more control and. Uh, airbrush primer is cheap and um, it's just uh, I, I think it's a lot easier than taking it outside and doing it with a rattle can. Next up um, I'm gonna uh, do another prime. Um, this is um, it's just a, a, a brownish red um, surface primer. Um, it didn't work out quite so good for the giant spiders and, and rat swarms, but um, worked out pretty good for the dinosaurs. Uh, you don't have to, to prime, you know, with the airbrush, like, or prime other colors with the airbrush. Paint will stick just fine to primer, but um, I just wanted to do this as an extra step because, um, you know, it's, a, it's an easy way to add some color to these guys. Next up, um, I'm gonna do more airbrushing. Um, <clears throat> I have uh, a few different colors. I just grabbed some different Foleo um, colors. Uh, I have some model air colors um, that I wanted to try out. Uh, and uh, and then the, uh, the game color is, that's not meant for airbrush. It's a little bit too thick. Uh, so you definitely wanna thin it down if you're gonna use it in your airbrush, but model color and uh, um, model air are work really well in the airbrush. So does, so does game ink. Game ink, model air, and model color all go through the airbrush really great. Good rule of thumb when you're mixing up paints to put in your airbrush is to have the paint um, about the consistency of milk because um, <clears throat> if it's any thicker than that there's a good chance that it's gonna dry in the tip or it's just like not gonna be able to shoot through the airbrush at all it's if it's much thicker than that and like you're gonna get clogging in the front of your airbrush and then you're gonna get those little splatter like spatter effects or your airbrush is just going to seize up. It's just going to clog completely and then you're going to have to clean it before you can paint again. Mm -hmm. 
Next up, I'm going to do a, um, a wash over the whole model, or over, over both of the models and uh, the bases too. Um, I'm going to uh, use Game Ink, which is um, it's a, a Vallejo ink product, but it's nice because it, di it, it dries uh, totally flat, like non-gloss. Um, that's kind of a problem with inks, like a lot of times ink washes, they kind of dry like a little bit glossy. Um, you can add um, matte medium to it, um, or matte, yeah, matte um, glazing, not matte glazing, uh, uh, matte varnish. Yeah, you can add matte varnish medium to your inks and that'll dull them down. But this is just going to um, kind of define all the little scales and then it's going to kind of define the little um, uh, dirt, you know, like uh, raised edges and recesses um, to create some shadows and highlights. Now um, I'm going to start doing some uh, edge highlighting. Um, <clears throat> you know, you could do this with the airbrush too, uh, but um, you know, for those of us who don't have like all of that much control with the airbrush, um, this might be a little bit easier. Um, I'm doing a, a two brush blending or um, a wet blending. It's where you put some paint down and then you either take a clean brush or you dip your brush in the water and then kind of uh, like feather out the edges. Um, like, yeah, two brush blending, wet blending, or feathering whatever you want to call it, um, kind of doing some, some highlighting in some areas where I want the, uh, the models to pop out a little bit more, to create more definition, more highlights. More um, uh, two, brush bend, bleh, two brush blending, feathering, uh, edge highlighting. Um, I'm using um, P3 paints for this. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of my favorite uh, paints to use for like uh, two brush blending and, and uh, like uh, kind of like feathering like straight out of the pot. Um, it's nice because I can just open the pot and then do it and then um, like do it on the model, do the, the, the feathering and all that on the model without having to set up the wet palette and things like that. And uh, I, I pretty much only use um, Vallejo and uh, P3 paints for this kind of stuff. Um, but uh, you could definitely use like Scale 75. Apparently that's like the pro European stuff. Um, I've never tried it, but I want to get my hands on some to try it. very last steps is um, I'm gonna do um, a little bit of dry brushing um, <clears throat> so you know you could um, like skip the whole like edge highlighting wet blending uh, all that stuff and just do dry brushing but like learn how to edge highlight learn how to wet blend and like feather and stuff like that like it'll really really improve your painting um, like uh, dry brushing is great, but what if you have a model that doesn't have a lot of texture, it doesn't have a lot of scales or whatever to uh, pick up with uh, dry brushing. Um, you need to like do other things to, to create highlights on your models. Uh, so I just want to um, make the little scales pop out and then I also just thought it would look cool to kind of like give him like an ashy texture like in some spots like on his back or I guess on her back if this is the mama. Next up um, on the base I'm gonna um, <clears throat> use some dry pigments um, and uh, these are um, pan pastels but you could use like weathering effects if you uh, if you go to like a hobby shop or something a lot of times they have those or even um, you could take like pastels 
and then grind them up and then just put them in like a makeup case. You could probably use makeup to do this too, but it has that dry, um, like, uh, you know, ground um, dirt kind of look to it. And it's, it just looks, um, you know, it's perfect for uh, like ground texture on, on models. Next up, I'm gonna glue some little um, static grass tufts to the bases, um, and then I just take a pair of tweezers and um, and then put a little dab of super glue on the bottom of them, and then stick them down to the base, and then like spread out the little leaves. Next, um, I'm gonna um, do something else to the bases. Uh, so I'm just going to take a little bit of uh, clear Elmer's uh, school glue and then um, I'm going to kind of like paint that around the, uh, static, the static grass tufts and on the bases. And then I'm going to um, sprinkle down some like super, super fine grit sand around the bases. And uh, if you don't like, if you do the, try this and then you don't like how the sand, if it's like a little bit too bright for you, you can use a wash or you can use like um, something, you know, just a really, really thin layer of pigments to kind of darken them down. But I ended up actually skipping that because I kind of liked how the sand looked on there. I, th I thought it looked pretty good. So at this point, um, I was just going to call it good, uh, but um, I actually thought that they looked a little bit too like camouflaged um like kind of like one note uh brown and and you know uh like burnt ochre kind of yellow so i decided to add a little bit of red to them and then i actually had um varnished the models at this point but you can still you can still paint on your models after they're varnished and then you know varnish them again like do a couple of coats it'll be fine um, but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna like kind of dry brush on some like more reddish brown on their backs to create a little bit more color. So that's it. Those are the finished models. Um, it's a really quick paint job. I think that the whole thing for both models only took like, um, I want to say like 45 minutes. So, you know, if you need to paint up some dinos quick, uh, try it. Uh, Anyways, um, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you feel inspired.